In this lecture, we're going to learn how to set environment variables in a .env file for a node project. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content because oftentimes there is data that you don't want to publish on GitHub or publish on the web. You want to make sure that only you, the developer, can access it. So for that, we're going to create environment variables. And there are many ways to create environment variables. I'm going to show you the most convenient way that works on all computers. All right, so join me in your terminal in your project folder. Here we're going to make a new file with touch if you're on Mac or notepad if you are on Windows. This will be a .env file. All right, and you notice if you list out your contents, you actually won't see it, but it will be created there. Okay, as well, we need a .git ignore file. So I'm going to touch and make .git ignore. And again, if you list it out, you won't see it, but it will be created. All right, so the .env file will contain the environment variables. The .git ignore is a file where you list out all of the files in your project that you want GitHub to ignore when you're uploading to GitHub or via Git. Okay, now we want to put in all of our secret variables into the .env file. So you can open the .env file with nano.env and that will allow you to edit it right here in the console, the terminal, or you could just open it with a code editor as well, or even a notepad. Just make sure it's saved as .env, not .txt or anything. The extension should be .env. Okay, now in our server, let's take some of our private variables and put them into that .env file. So something that you want to keep private would be something like the session secret. So here, I'm going to copy this session secret value and I'm going to put it into my env file instead. So let's go into our terminal and here I'm going to create a new variable in .env. I'll call this session secret and I'm just going to use an equal sign and then paste in the value. Okay so let's see it's quite a long session secret but there it is. All right so that is the first secret value or variable I want to put into my .env file. Notice there is a different format for .env files. You don't have strings, you don't have colons, you just have the name of the variable, session secret, whatever you want the name to be, an equal sign, and then the value. Now you don't even have any commas, you just use a new line to create a new variable. Okay, so we have one. Let's go back into Visual Studio. We also want to keep secret our client ID and our client secret. So here I'm going to copy this client ID. Make sure you don't, however, copy any of the quotation marks. You just want to copy the value of the ID. And then we're going to go into our terminal and I'm going to create client underscore ID and assign that to equal that value. There it is. And one more we had for a new line was the client secret. So I'm going to copy this client secret, go to my terminal and here create client underscore secret and assign it to equal that value. Okay, now we want to save this. So we're going to use control X, hit yes to save and then hit enter. So that has modified my .env file and put that content in there. Okay, so we have specified the variables for the env file, but we have some more steps. Our next step is going to be to add the env file to our git ignore file. So let's use nano.git ignore to open that up. And here we specify the relative paths to whatever files we want to keep hidden. So I'm going to use .env and you can just call it directly like that. Okay, you don't have to go into the parent, the parent is assumed. Okay, then we'll save this. You can also just edit the git ignore file with a notepad or a code editor. Then we'll hit control X, yes, and enter to save that file. Okay, now we have to make a config.js file. This will allow us to access our environment variables. So I am going to next up 
here use touch or notepad to make a config.js and this actually will show up. You can see your contents with ls on Mac or dir on Windows. Okay, so now we have config.js. Let's open that up with a code editor because it's a JavaScript file. It will be nice to see the syntax and the highlighting. Here inside of config.js, the first thing we want to do is require a .env and then .config. So this is quite unique syntax here. We're not requiring the .env file with a period. We're requiring it by calling it .env. And this is actually referring to our env file with the extension env. And we add parentheses here for the configuration. So this means we can use the environment variables in this file. Next, we're going to call module.exports to export some variables so they can be used from this file in other files. And here we create an object full of all of the exports that we want. Here we want to put in our three different variables that we just created. Remember, we created the session secret. And instead of putting in the actual value here, we put in process.env.session underscore secret. So this is because inside of our environment variables, we created a variable called session secret. And we can access that with process.env. Then we just created session underscore secret. We can actually call this whatever we want. This is how we're going to reference the environment variable session secret in other files. So then we're going to add in our other ones. Remember, we had a client underscore secret. Let's see, what did we have? We had client ID and client secret. So let's create client ID. Note here we have to use colons because we're using JavaScript object notation. Here we're using process.env.client ID. And one more we had was client underscore secret. Remember, we created that environment variable. So we give it any name we want for referencing amongst our files. Then we call process.env to access environment variables and we call client secret, which is the actual name of the environment variable and pay attention to the casing. Okay, so from now on, instead of using session secret, client ID, client secret, we're going to be requiring the config file anywhere that we use the environment variables and we are going to be referencing the variable as config dot and then the name of the variable. So let's go into server.js and replace all of our exposed variables. Okay, save everything and go into server.js. Here for our secret, instead of using the secret directly, I'm going to remove that and, and instead I'm going to use config dot, then we had our session underscore secret. So I'm referring to this session secret export right here. Now if I want to be able to use config though, I have to define config at the top of my file. So I'm going to require config here, we'll call it config and we are requiring the config file which is one parent up. So it's just in the parent folder slash config.js. That will allow us to use that config.js file and any of its exports just by referencing config dot the name of the export. Okay, so we have config dot session secret. We had two more here, the client ID and the client secret. I'm going to remove them from my file here and I'm going to reference them with config dot client ID and config dot client secret. So now I have protected my data and I can do this with any piece of data that I want. I could make it into an environment variable if I want to protect it. So no one will see it. It will not be uploaded to GitHub because we put it in dot git ignore if we choose to upload our files to GitHub. We will only see it as a developer. So we also want to make sure we don't upload the .env file when we're deploying the server. It should be ignored. One more thing before we test this out is because in our configuration file, we actually are using the .env package, we have to actually install that. So this is allowing us to reference our .env file because if we did .env, it would actually look for a folder. So we have to use .env, the package instead. So inside of your terminal, in your project folder, you have to call npm install .env, which is a helper package to allow you to create a .env file and then reference it in other files like config. Okay, so now we can call npx nodemon server.js and that will allow us to start our server and we can test out our site again to make sure there has, have been no breaking changes with the use of .env. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.